Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. Um, I hope all is well. Today, we will be presenting to you about our research on malaria with a special focus on diagnosis and treatment. My name is Amala Mani. Hi, I'm Trisha Reiki. I'm Al Shane. I'm Samuel Witham. I'm Maria Trava. I'm Ananya Ravi. And I'm Mariah Victorian. Throughout our presentation, we hope to highlight the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. So now that the past group has told us about the symptoms, what do you do when a doctor has discovered some symptoms of malaria? The next step after this is to diagnose with a test. There are many types of tests, but the first test that is commonly done is a rapid diagnostic test or an RDT. This test has about an 80% accuracy rate and can be done in, other, in under 15 minutes, which makes it very efficient. Once this test is done, in order to confirm the results and make sure there were no false positive or negatives, then the microscopy test needs to be done. This test has a near 100% accuracy rate and it does take longer. If this test fails, a PCR test can be done, but this is not the preferred method because it can take up to a week and cost a lot of money. An accurate diagnosis means that you have not received a false positive or negative result. A diagnosis usually includes two parts, the presumptive and the confirmatory test. In our case, the presumptive test is the rapid diagnostic test and the confirmatory test is the microscopy. Both RDT tests and microscopy are vital in diagnosing malaria, but they're completely useless without the healthcare workers trained to use, administer, and read the results of these tests. Seeking healthcare early on from an early stage is very, very important because most patients don't seek healthcare or seek medical attention until the symptoms have become very, very severe. Um, if you don't get immediate attention, it can lead to a, um, detrimental symptoms such as organ failure, organ damage, or even death. Because of this, it is absolutely crucial and vital to get patients in early and diagnosed so that um, the, the spread of malaria becomes reduced and so do the symptoms. But most patients hesitate to get, to get diagnosed. Why? Because of issues like cost, lack of healthcare, geographical obstacles, and even the belief that their local drugs will work better than the drugs that they give at the hospital, which is why we need to educate them. So now that we've diagnosed the patient, we have to treat them. The most common treatment in Nigeria for uncomplicated malaria is IC, ACT treatment. This is given orally through either a tablet or a syrup if it is a young child. However, if the malaria is complicated, which means three plus or four plus, or with another disease such as anemia, then it must be administered through IV, IV artemisin. This is so the drug can reach the body effectively and as quickly as possible. However, there is a problem. Most people in Bauchi live in poverty and spend under one USD per day. The medications and prescripted medications cost about 22 USD per day, which causes a financial problem. This is extremely important to know because without the proper and full treatment plan, the people in Bauchi's um, malaria will not fully go away. Although the symptoms may subside, the Malaria will not fully go away unless the full treatment is provided. So through our community workshop, we are planning to target the mindset of the people. So what's happening right now is that because rapid diagnostic tests and treatments are not really incorporated that often into the lives of the people of Bauchi, they're kind of scared of it. There's a fear as it's not normal to them. So what we are trying to do is normalize these rapid diagnostic tests and treatments so that the people of Bauchi feel comfortable using these as a way to get the proper treatment that they need. Our target audience are the adults of Bauchi because first they have authority over the children, which means children are more, would be more um, tended to listen to their parents rather than any other adults. And second, they're self-aware. 
they know their health condition more than anybody else. And lastly, connections. They can use the connections they have within the village itself to spread the awareness and therefore sustain our efforts even more. Um, this is a flyer we made for the parents of Bauchi, which has three main questions that we had to simplify for the people of Bauchi will understand instead of using big words. So our first question is, why do we need to go to the hospital for a diagnosis? And it reads, you need the hospital for a diagnosis to see what is causing problems and sickness throughout the body. Our second question is, what is a diagnosis? A diagnosis discovers what makes you sick. And the third question is, how does the testing and diagnosis work? The testing checks the blood and tells you whether you have malaria or not. And on the back of our flyer, we have a sheet. Um, I mean, we have a map of the local hospitals in Bauchi, Nigeria, for them they can see where they can get treatment at. Okay, so our first workshop will be a live demonstration of the rapid diagnostic test. So right now, 66 out of 100 people offered an RDT will not take it. Some of the reasons for this include fear. As they haven't done it before, people are scared of the process of actually taking the diagnostic test. Another fear is how much time it will take. The people of Bauchi would more rather be working and making money rather than spending their money trying to buy a test. They also don't really know where to find these diagnostic tests as it's not very accessible to them. And finally, they're fearful of the cost. So what we plan to do is do a live demonstration of the rapid diagnostic tests. Prior to the workshop, uh, staff of leadership initiatives in Nigeria will go and ask community leaders and religious leaders if they could volunteer at the workshop and be the ones taking the diagnostic tests. We made the, we're making the community leaders and religious leaders take the diagnostic test as these are people that the citizens will trust. And if they see someone they trust taking the test, they are more prone to taking the test as well. While we are waiting for the results of the test to come back, the community leaders will lead an open discussion where they will ask people what are the challenges that they face when getting diagnosed. This will A, help to create a sense of community between the people as it will show that their, their struggles are not alone and B will also allow time for the community leaders to address the hesitancy that the people may have. For example, during this discussion, if someone says, I'm scared of the test and what it will do to me, the community leader will be like, you just saw me taking the test and trust me, it's really not that bad. After the open discussion, the community leader or religious leader will ask if anyone from the audience would like to come and volunteer to take a diagnostic test as they have nothing to lose. In this scenario, the tests are free and are right in front of them. Any of the tests that are not used during this live demonstration will be donated to the local hospitals, making them more accessible to the people. Our second activity will show the difference between the herbal medications and the prescribed medications. We will have a magnet to represent the prescribed medications, paper clips to represent the malaria, and a rock or a stone to represent the herbal medications. We'll have an employee first start by trying to use the stone to pick up the paper clips. As the stone does not contain any magnetic properties, this will fail to happen. Next, the worker will try to pick up the paper clips using the magnet. Since the magnet does contain um, magnetic properties just like the paper clips, it will attract the paper clips. The worker will then explain how the prescribed medication, like the magnets, will attract the malaria like the paper clips. And the herbal medications like the stone will not in, is not advanced enough to fully attract the malaria. Using our budget of $500, we decided to purchase five things. First, we purchased a box of magnets, which will only cost $8, a set of paper clips, which will only cost one. We also purchased just, we also got a rock from outside, which will be completely free. We also decided to budget $100 towards printing the flyers. And finally, our remaining $390, we put towards as many RDT tests as we could. We were able to get around 13,000 for these $390 at a wholesale price of around three cents per test. To conclude, we hope our efforts will change the social stigmas 
surrounding the diagnostic tests and challenge the misinformation spread amongst the citizens of Bauchi. Thank you for listening. Um, group team two, that was nice. Um, excellent presentation again, and confidence is clear and uh, exuberating. Um, I like how the pictures actually are quite local. It's something that all people in Bauchi can actually feel this is us. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's going from, but this is for this is us and for us. Um, that's a very good one. And then the issue of targeting early care seeking is very important, as well as confirming the diagnosis from the patients and the community members. I so much love the magnetic game. It's, it's captivating. It's something that easily people can see and then reason uh, with it. Um, the only issue maybe going forward, uh, since I learned this project, will go for some time, right? Um, sometimes the fault come from us, healthcare workers. You know, we have different kind of healthcare workers. Um, healthcare workers who refuse to test. So maybe if you are buoyant enough, you can consider maybe targeting some group of healthcare workers because they don't prescribe the, the, the test. They will just say, they will just treat you empirically. And that is against the guideline, even in Nigeria and all around the globe. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. Hi guys, you guys did a very good job as well. I also liked how you went straight to the to the point. I liked how well you weave the story from the beginning, letting us know how it's going to start and also ending it like kind of bringing us back into what you presented. That was quite excellent storytelling. I also like your games as well. I like the map. Fun. I do wish your I know you tried to make it simpler, but I wish it was even more simpler. I think simple in my head is always like one sentence. Like when I look at it, I can see the beginning and the end of the sentence. No way, like they're like three lines. But I get the spirit and you definitely hit the target. So good job for that as well. There was a part of the slide that talked about why people don't get tested. You said something like six, six out of a hundred. What you said didn't it wasn't the same message that was on the slide. So maybe you just correct that because the slide kind of read like, this is why people come and take the test. Whereas what you said was, this is why people do not take the test. You presented it really excellently well, by the way, it's not you, but then just fix the slide because this could actually be sent back to Bauchi. Good job. Thank you very much, team two. Um, it was a very, very good, presentation, very captivating, you know, encourages us to all pay attention and listen to what you have to say. That's why we pay attention to what you're saying and what is uh, projected up there. Um, first of all, um, very, very uh, a big well done. Uh, I'm just curious about the cost of malaria medicine. That's too much. Malaria medicine costs about three, five dollars. But the treatment of malaria, if it gets serious, uh, that requires admission, you know, and along with other complications, uh, this would cost up to 30, up to even 40 dollars per admission, not the drug. The drug itself just costs five dollars. I think the most expensive one is about five, six, seven dollars. Okay. And uh, uh, it's really, uh, so sorry. Yeah, uh, good initiative, you know, with the uh, posters. However, if I'm looking at this poster from afar, I wouldn't know exactly what you're talking about. So there should be maybe a picture of a mosquito or I don't know if you understand my point. It is good, but at least something should stand out and say, this is why we are putting our poster here. Because yes, I can see uh, Northern ladies, Northern babies, I can see Africa, but I don't know what you want me to test here. There are diagnosis for a lot of things, but for what? Especially for people who don't know how to read. So you want to also capture them in your posters so that, oh, if they see a picture of a mosquito or something, they know that 
is mosquito you're talking about. Okay, so if you can find a way to make it simpler, that is really very good. Your initiative of getting tested and you mentioned LI staff. Unfortunately, LI does not have healthcare professionals in their offices. There is no nurse or midwife or doctor in Bauchi. However, this is a good initiative for us to look for nurses or doctors should we proceed to implement your ideas because it is indeed a wonderful idea you know to encourage testing to encourage early diagnosis and screening so well done well done and uh, thank you very much congratulations thank you doctors